Manchester United were taken back to school for a harsh reality check against rivals Manchester City and the United Twins need to speak about it. Blessings to everybody inside, including yourself, Cappy Opia Do and World well, United Twins are back. First and foremost, though, we would like to tone it down. We have been away for a few weeks now since before the international break. And while we were away, we heard about the news of Sir Bobby Charlton passing away. And we would like to send our heartfelt condolences to you know, his entire family. And much like what everybody else has, has said about him, he is an exemplary human being, a, a great example, not just on the football pitch, but off the football pitch as well. And, and what he did for Manchester United, what he did for, for his country as well, England. So many great examples of, of who he was as a person, his core values, what he was able to overcome as a human being, so much adversity in those years of him being one of the greatest players and working his way up even to being one of the greatest players of his generation. So heartfelt condolences once again and may you rest in peace. Wow, what a game to return on, huh? The Manchester Derby, Manchester United nil, Manchester City three. Whew. Man United lose the first five out of 10 league games for the first time since 1986, oh, man. just prior to the appointment of one Sir Alex Ferguson. Prior and <laughs> leading up to the game, even after the game, I had some thoughts about the amount of times I've seen this team or Different iterations, with minor changes of course. Get outclassed by opposition, we should be going toe to toe with plenty. No doubt, they'll have their moments, and this is Manchester United I'm speaking about. They will have their moments. But the reality is, when you have forward players who can't take advantage of opposition mistakes, or play the right pass, just make the right decision in general, how are you going to score goals, win games? I mean, Manchester City in possession was sloppy in the opening stages. And every time we did the defensive job for them, for the most part at least, we made their job easier by continuing the trend of mediocrity on the field of play. And it's not just attackers, by the way. There's midfielders involved. There's defensive work in though. Everybody is involved in our failures, in our mediocrity overall. One thing I will say is the penalty that we conceded was soft and somewhat subjective. However, my opinion still remains the fact that when you put your hands on someone in the box, you run the risk of giving away a penalty. And that is exactly what Rasmus Hoyland did. The conversation about officiating consistency still stand, but I won't use that as an excuse for the result because we still had over an hour to change the outlook of our game. And for me, we didn't do enough to offset Manchester City's threat until it was added time in the first half, which isn't good enough. Not at home. Definitely not at Old Trafford. And I'm not expecting some expansive football with the deficiencies this squad Definitely. has. But to be in a situation where even when the sad regains possession, you just know we'll lose the ball in quick time. <laughs> even quicker than it took to win back possession. And to be honest, that's not too hard. <laughs> that's how City were able to push our defensive line back, however, and, and find their way into our box multiple times, including that Harlan header at the end of the half. Well saved by Onana, but a precursor to a catastrophic moment of defending once more. Let me tell you all something. There's no point overly explaining the actions of the second half. Harden's second saw Bernardo Silva free on the left-hand side once again to click the ball to a free Harden at the back post. Dare I say any more? Dare I say more? Second to react to the folding goal as well. Let's not forget about that. In terms of Eddington Hag, now, recently he released some quotes regarding his previous playing style at Ajax. I believe he was asked questions of whether he would revert back to it. Whatever it was, the quotes are on the screen. Shout out to the editor. Shout out to the editor. And he virtually refuted everything in terms of going back to that. 
touching on the differences between clubs, the players at his disposal, and, and so forth. Being more of a direct side. One thing I will say is that the Hulk killed me. It really did. The, the Hulk really did. Me too. He keeps on killing me. Yeah. I keep on going up, down, up, down, yeah. round, round, up, down. Level. So now, I'm going. Take. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let me rephrase that because that. Come on. It was going to sound mad. I'm going to unfortunately kill your hopes because mine, gone. Finished. Finito. Based off the history of our recruitment, one side could say that this would need to include mass turnover of existing players and then replacements. That's a lot to ask for. Some could also argue that the level of our coaching team clearly isn't good enough because we continue to get the basics wrong and more. When we tune into other Premier League teams, it's not a secret that our imperfections are magnified. And when will we be able to see these players in particular held to the levels that they should be performing at, should I say? There are some guys on this team, and we saw it again on Sunday, that are being forced to play through absolute stinkers without even a thought of being penalised because of their importance to the team. Whether you believe so or, or whether you think that's not the case, that's how I see it. And sometimes, guys need to be dropped. Some guys need to be held accountable. They need to sit on the bench and see the game from a, a certain perspective to understand how they need to improve, how they need to move forward. But I just don't think enough of our players are getting those opportunities. And you can clearly see that on the football pitch now. There are many other things to touch on, whether that's fatigue, or, uh, mental, physical, or... I, I just... I need a break, right? Ready? <laughs> we just come back. I need a break. <laughs> the final thing I'll, I'll touch on for now is something that concerns me and it's something that I felt like I've seen in past regimes. And that is about Eric Ten Hag now submitting to the limitations yet of this Manchester United team. Mm. It'll make it sound like the squad is good enough. But the reality is that it's stubbornness behind certain players, whether you as an individual deem it as right or wrong, has already started to turn heads and we're quickly approaching this stage where pressure is mounting. Mm. And some are already calling for his head. Do you think that's the right thing in the comment section? Are you Eric Ten Hag in? Are you Eric Ten Hag out? Or are you a little bit in the middle, ladies and gentlemen? All I know is that this club is deep underwater right now. I think at Manchester United, it's important to implement a system anywhere of critical thinking in order to evaluate everything that goes right and wrong for progression purposes. An issue for the entirety of this club is that there has been a lack of critical thinking in all departments and that rids individuals of having the responsibility of holding themselves and others accountable. Those are crucial principles within a winning culture. I see the hierarchy who refuses to interact with those who question their methods of, or ownership and leadership methods. I see players who for years have spoken without substance and have showcased exactly that on the football pitch all over the place. We are, in the words of Jose Mourinho, specialists in failure. And until that changes, Manchester United will never again see years of being a legitimate threat for anything but secondary domestic trophies at best. CTC News. Welcome to CTC News, where I will be taking you through some of the latest greatest and not so greatest news around the end of Manchester United. So let's get into the first story. Women's football has currently been on their end of October international break, but before the hiatus in club football, we got back to winning ways with an emphatic 5-0 victory against Everton in a Women's Super League. Melvin Mollard opened the scoring, with Nikita Paris and Rachel Williams both scoring second half braces to take United up to fourth in a Women's Super League. 
The next fixture will be up against Brighton and Hove Albion on Sunday, who have lost three of their first four league games under manager Melissa Phillips, who was appointed in April this year. Some good news for Manchester United fans. Ahmad Diallo has been seen on the training fields, still working his way back from a knee injury sustained on Manchester United's tour of the USA this summer. With Eric Ten Hag's attackers struggling to produce in all competitions, will Ahmad Diallo be welcome competition for our out-of-form, non-goal scoring threats? Former Manchester United player and captain Roy Keane suggested on Sky Sports that he would immediately take the captaincy of Bruno Fernandes after Manchester United's defeat against Pep Guardiola's Manchester City. The Portuguese international replaced Harry Maguire full-time in the summer after a relatively successful period with him standing in during the 22-23 campaign. However, under his leadership so far this season, the Red Devils have broken all the wrong records and seem to be moving in a backward force. Would you ruthlessly replace Bruno as captain or are his comments, Roy Keane's comments that is, unwarranted? Let us all know in the comments section. But for now, that concludes the latest episode, the latest iteration of CTC News. Tell me what you thought about everything that was reported in the comment section below. Enjoy today. Chase the chaos. What a lot of CTC News. Next up for Manchester United, a game in the Carabao Cup fourth round against Newcastle. Our final opponents last season. Can they get revenge or will we progress to the next round of the cup in our attempt to defend it? And then on the weekend, Fulham. <sighs> the lovely 12.30 kickoff say. CM should be doing a watch along for that one. So I will be pushing for the content. You guys should be too in the comment section below. Let us know if you want to see a watch along. Yeah. But for now, but for now, ladies and gentlemen, hit that like button if you reach the end of the video and you've enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Hit the notification bell to be notified Boy. when the twins post. And share to your friends and frenemies. Because if you don't share to your friends and frenemies, how will they know about us? How will new people around the world Know about the United Twins. Know about CM22 ENT. I don't know. Until the next time. We'll see you lot sinner.